The Pencaro Suit, written by Kate Wilson. She's still there when he goes back the next day. Short, leather coat, cropped, curly hair swept back from an ageless face. She looks like someone plucked from another time. How long has she been there? Leaning against the wall, one leg propped, smoking with a nonchalant air, queen of the drang. She turns then, looks straight at him, gives a half laugh, half sneer. You again? Come back for another look? Keen, aren't you? I can tell. I've met men like you before. Men in your situation. Oh, she knows. Be sure of that. Knows all about the needs that brought him to this place. Exactly why he's come here. He falters, then turns to leave and hesitates. Oh, look, he's gone all red. Don't worry, lover boy. I'll look after you. Harris! Harris! I know you're in there! Oh, dear. Your friend don't sound too happy. Not surprised, mind, after what you did. Looked like you couldn't snap a twig. Appearances are deceptive, clearly. You're dead, Harris. A dead man walking. It was an accident. I never meant... You would say that, wouldn't you? Anyway, looking don't cost. But I haven't got all day. You made your mind up. And then he hears it again. The music. Strange, disquieting. Speaking like the sea with its hypnotic roll and swell. Roll and swell. And from nowhere, the thirst comes. The clawing, desperate need. Curse of ancestors. The woman takes a small flask from her coat pocket and takes a long, slow mouthful. He watches her like a man at his own funeral. Come on, Aris. Just one mouthful. Calm your nerves. But you know to do so now would be to lose yourself completely. No, no. So yourself, your loss. She reaches up suddenly, snatches something from the air, holds it in her clenched fist and then throws the match in. Two shillings for a cup full of buttons. Daylight robbery. Make sure you find them all, darling. You'll need them where you're going. He scrabbles in the dirt to find them. 17, 18, 19, come on, come on. And puts them in a pouch with the others. Here, here, 20. Come on then, vamoose. She leads him into the narrowing lane. The walls, tall on either side, are clad with tangled ivy like malevolent living cliffs. She walks at great speed, though as he follows, she appears to be hardly moving at all. The lane turns again, narrowing further so now even the sky is hidden. Harris! You worm. A dim yellow light bleeds out into the darkness from a window covered with the dust and grime of maybe centuries. They are outside a small shop. The shop. The one everyone knows of, but no one has ever seen. A shop that may or may not exist. Appearances are deceptive, clearly. She pushes a door and he follows her in. Ah, Ariel, there you are. Immaculate timing as always. Mr. Harris, welcome. We've been expecting you. My dear, did you... Of course. The butter market's finest. Mmm, saffron buns. Thank you. Do sit down, Mr. Harris. Pull that chair up. Harris sits and gazes in awe at Pen Caro's lair. On every surface are glass jars filled to the brim with buttons. Polished brass and sturdy gabardine. Buttons covered in chintz and wool. Round buttons, square buttons. Dainty mother of pearl from a lady's evening glove. Lit by the firelight, they shine like so many jewels. The walls are lined from floor to ceiling with shelves stacked with bolts of cloth of exceptional quality and on a rosewood table behind which the old man sits 
is an ancient treadle sewing machine. Harris wonders what kind of suit he might wear. Which fabric his meagre purse might buy. Think he's quite taken with your little emporium. As he should be. Only the finest cloths for a Pencaro suit. Question is, Harris, can you afford it? What exactly have you got to offer? We mustn't rush our guest. He must consider carefully before making his decision. I don't think them Trelawney brothers are the waiting kind, Mr P. Buried their last debtor, vertical, to his neck on Gudrivi Beach, then sat and watched as the tide came in. Eye for an eye, that lot. That's what I've heard. Well, then, are you familiar with our terms, Mr Harris? You understand this is a one-way journey. Once the agreement is made, there's no turning back. I understand. When the door is opened, you must step through. The suit requires it. I want to go. There's nothing for me here. Except a nasty death courtesy of the incoming tide. But we don't pass judgement here. This is a bespoke service. Now, show me what you bought. Ariel, will you... Slowly, Harris pulls the pouch from his jacket and hands it to her. She folds it in her fist and shakes it gently, assessing its contents. Harris holds his breath. Not much in here as far as I can tell. Let's have a look. She unties the neck of the pouch and spills 24 gold sovereigns onto the table. Harris jumps to his feet and stares at the gold and, for one wild moment, imagines all he could do with such riches. Last chance gold. Fool's gold, some might call it. But those are real enough. Now, you can take them. And you can take your chance out there with them Trelawney boys, or you can use them to purchase a fine suit. Up to you. Harris! We got something for you! Not often people find their way down here. So, Mr Harris, what's it to be? You coming out to play, Harris? The suit. I want the suit. But there's no time to... We know you're down there. Help me! Of course. Ariel... Please show Mr Harris the dressing room. She leads him into a tiny room at the back of the shop, behind a green velvet curtain. Inside is a full-length mirror and, hanging on the mirror's frame, a suit of the softest grey merino wool, lined with steel-coloured silk. Oh, very nice indeed. It will fit perfectly. How did you know? Is this where you're hiding? Please, it's time to get dressed. Harris leaves behind one life and dresses himself for another. What it will be, no one knows. Only the man or the woman stepping through the door will learn what lies on the other side. For some, it may be an earthly paradise. For others, the moment they see themselves in their fine new suit may be the last happiness they ever know. Ah, you look splendid, Mr. Harris. Harris! Harris! But now, you must go. He pushes aside an old rush mat on the floor. Underneath it is a door with two heavy brass handles, like those you might find on a coffin. He motions to Ariel, who comes to kneel beside him. They take a handle each, gripping them firmly in both hands, and heave the door open. Come out, Harris, or we're coming in. Ready, Harris? Now! The Pencaro Suit, written by Kate Wilson, and read by Olivia Lowry, Nina Hills, Aidan Nightingale and Keith Sparrow. Directed by Connie Crosby, with sound recordings by Phil Innes. This is part of a series of bedtime stories for grown-ups, produced by The Writer's Block.